Hi, my name is Randy Wong. I'm a program manager on the OneDrive team here with Lauren Koo, and we're really excited to be here today to share how to drive OneDrive adoption with the remote workforce. Today, we'll cover OneDrive's foundational role in Microsoft 365, how OneDrive plus Teams is powering content collaboration, how the OneDrive mobile app allows you to be productive on any device from anywhere, how your OneDrive data is protected on all your devices, and finally, best practices for driving adoption and engagement. Organizations, entire industries are having to rethink how they get work done in this COVID-19 environment. I just want to acknowledge and empathize with four of the key remote work challenges that we've been hearing from customers. Number one, accessing files from anywhere. Whether you're at home or on the go, it can be a challenge to access the file you need. It could be on a local device, a file share, a network drive. Number two, collaboration. Without the ability to physically be face-to-face -face and travel, collaboration and meetings have turned digital. And it's even more important to be able to connect with your customers. Three, finding files. As you jump from device to device, finding that last file you worked on can be difficult. Number four, data production. We hear this loud and clear from our IT stakeholders. Security and manageability have never been more important in a world where people are using whatever devices they can find to get work done. The great news is OneDrive helps you with all these challenges. OneDrive powers file experiences and collaboration across Microsoft 365. With OneDrive, all your files are in one place and accessible across all your devices from the PC, phone, tablet. You can collaborate using the familiar sharing dialogue across any application in Microsoft 365. Easily find the files you work on using our recent view and our, the power of the Microsoft Graph. And last but not least, best in class enterprise level security, compliance and manageability. OneDrive is foundational to enabling remote work. As OneDrive has become an essential tool during this time, we've seen incredible over 100% year over year growth. This is the biggest growth we've seen in the history of the product. Thank you. The growth has come from existing customers using the product more and new customers onboarding to the cloud. No matter where you are in your OneDrive journey, there's an opportunity for you. It is exciting and humbling to work with and learn from you, our customers. Thank you. Today, we want to highlight four different OneDrive stories across different industries. Ecolab in health and life sciences, Nestle in food and consumer products, Bridgewater in financial services, and Walmart in retail. These customers have embraced OneDrive as a central part of their digital transformation and remote work strategy. We hope you draw some inspiration from them and best practices from their OneDrive stories. Next, we'll transition to demos. We'll showcase scenarios for remote work and new innovations that have recently rolled out or rolling out soon. We have three demo sets. I'll walk you through OneDrive Plus Teams, and Lauren will share the latest on productivity and data protection on mobile devices. Let's talk about OneDrive Plus Teams. One of the best ways to drive OneDrive adoption is through Microsoft Teams. Like many of us, I start my work day by opening up Teams, and we're making it easier to manage, access, and share files in Teams. Let me show you. Here I am in Microsoft Teams on the web, specifically in the Files tab. For the purposes of this demo, I'm playing the role of Nestor Wilkie at Contoso Electronics. Nestor loves Teams, but he loves being able to access his OneDrive content right within Teams. And here you can see he has that same familiar view with golden folders and the command bar that he has on the OneDrive website. This is because OneDrive powers its experience within Teams. I can do things like create new files and even upload files right from within Teams to OneDrive. But sometimes I want to work with files from a specific team in Teams. And for that, I'll go over to the Teams tab. For this demo, I'm looking at the Mark 8 project team, and specifically the go-to-market plan that I'm working on. And you can see to the right, all of the files that I work on associated with this channel. Additionally, you see this custom column status, which also has been applied to conditional formatting. So I can see which files have been approved and which ones are pending. But we know that Teams is much more than a place to work with files. It's also about collaboration. And we've made some enhancements to make sharing even better from within Teams. 
when I go over to the chat tab, I can start a conversation with any of my colleagues. In this case, I'm working with Alex and I want to share a file with him. I've already started the chat. I'm just going to pick a file from my OneDrive. And you can see that same view of the different files within OneDrive. For this case, I'm going to choose Customer Satisfaction Goals Q2 and Q3 for a meeting we're going to review later today. And I'll go ahead and share it. And clicking on this down arrow, you can see that I now have all the same capabilities that I have sharing from OneDrive right from within Teams. This again is because OneDrive powers this experience within Teams with the comment sharing dialog. From here, I can change the link settings and even add new capabilities like view edit or setting an expiration date for the file, changing the password, or even blocking download. So I'll click apply and send this off to Alex. A couple of the great ways we're making working in Teams better with OneDrive. In addition to making it easier to access your OneDrive files in Teams, we're making it easier to access your Teams files in OneDrive. And we've made this familiar OneDrive experience even faster, improving the time to interactive by over 30% this summer, responding to the feedback that people want to access their files quickly, especially when they're on their home networks. Now I'm going to show you two of the new features that we've rolled out recently to help you with your Teams Plus OneDrive files. The first thing I'm going to do is show file card. And I hover over this customer satisfaction goals Q2 and Q3 document that I just shared with Alex Wilbur. Here you can see intelligent information around the file and in the file with inside look, which tells you that this file takes three minutes to read and at a glance gives you bullet points of some of the high points of the actual document. Conversations tells you where this file has been referenced, whether it be Teams Conversations or Outlook Messages. Here you can see that I just shared this with Alex Wilbur 16, 16 minutes ago. And if I scroll down, I can actually see who's viewed this file and the number of views. This is important, especially in this remote work world where you don't know who's viewing the file when, and this really helps you be prepared in those meetings when you want to know who's, who's read the file. Now the next feature is one that we're really excited about bringing and it's add to OneDrive. Now within OneDrive, you can access all your shared libraries within the left nav. And remember that mark a project team we talked about earlier? Well, here it is. And that go to market folder, I can go ahead and click on this folder and actually add a shortcut to this folder to my files view. So I'll go ahead and click that. And what this does is it's adding a shortcut to my files. And you can see right here, I have that shortcut to my files. I'm not moving the files. I'm not copying the files. This is just a shortcut. This folder retains all the permissions and policies that I previously had. When I click on it, I can even see the same metadata conditional formatting, custom columns, and I can see that this folder is tied to Microsoft Teams and even go back to the channel conversation. These are some of the great ways we're making Microsoft Teams plus OneDrive better together. To recap, OneDrive plus Teams brings together the best of content and collaboration. No matter how and where you work, your Teams files are accessible from OneDrive and OneDrive files in Teams. While accessing files is great, we know that collaboration is king, and we're bringing that same familiar OneDrive sharing dialog with all the flexibility for link types and controls into Teams. With the file card, we bring you intelligence about and around the file. Conversations tell you where the file is referenced in mail and Teams, and you can even see who has viewed the content. This additional information is invaluable during remote work as you're able to really see the impact of your work and important context. And lastly, we're super excited to bring you Add to OneDrive to manage and organize all your shared content within the OneDrive experience. Easily add a shortcut to any shared folder, including from Teams, and it's accessible with one click from your main files view across web, sync, and mobile.
These are just a few of the great innovations we're bringing to you to make remote work with Teams plus OneDrive better. And now I'll pass it to Lauren to talk about the latest in mobile productivity. Thanks, Randy. Hello, everyone. My name is Lauren Koo, and I'm a program manager on the OneDrive mobile team. Working on that team, back when we were in the office, I was on my phone a lot. And now that I work from home, I find myself on my phone even more, and my iPad, and my laptop, and anything I can get my hands on that's gonna help me in that moment with that task. That's my new normal. And from the growth and usage we've seen in the mobile apps, that's the new normal for a lot of people. A lot of people are logging onto the OneDrive mobile app on all their devices to try to help them adapt to working from home. With the juggling of the responsibilities at home and the work that comes with working from home, we know that time is at a premium. So today, I'm excited to demo for you just a few of the things we're bringing to the OneDrive mobile apps to help you save time and work on the go. So let's go ahead and get started with our first demo on the OneDrive iOS app. So when we first launch the mobile app, we immediately see that we land in a new home view. The goal with Home is to help you pick up where you left off and find your important files fast. To that end, we now feature your recent files at the top of your home view. Our telemetry actually indicates that the vast majority of opens in the recent view actually come from the top five entries. So for that reason, we are taking the top five entries and highlighting them here. But of course, if you're looking for something that maybe you've opened recently, but it's not in your top five, you can tap the See All and see your full recent list. Under the recent list, we have our shared library section. This is to help you find those shared spaces that you're working with your team on. In my case, it's the Mark 8 project team that I actively use files for and others. Underneath that, we have a new section called offline files. A lot of users have told us that they keep their important documents and folders available for offline use in case they need to work on them when they don't have connectivity or they just want that peace of mind that they're there. So we've made that new section in home to easily get to those important files. I have this folder that I designated as offline use as, as I've downloaded for offline use. And so when I open it, I see that everything beneath that folder is made available for me offline. I can also add individual files. In this case, let's say I want to take one more file uh, available for offline use. And so I'll go ahead and tap the dot 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 by this terms and conditions. I'll tap make available offline. And we'll see that that does get downloaded for me and it then appears at the top of my offline files list. And of course, you still have your trusty files tab here. And the one thing I want to highlight is actually this go to market plan that I have. You saw this earlier in Randy's demo. This too is something I work on. And so I've added a shortcut to my files view for that go to market plan folder as well. I can easily get to that right from my app. I can tap on it. And then just like any other folder, I could make a scan here or open and view any of these documents on the go, all with super familiar iconography. So I always can tell which ones are my shortcuts, which ones are my folders. Now, this next feature I want to highlight shines particularly well on the iPad experience. So we're going to go ahead and move over to that. And when we land here in the app on the iPad, we see that we land again in that same home view, featuring your recent files, your shared libraries, and your offline files. Now, the section I want to focus on for this demo is the offline files. Something that's particularly come in handy for me these last few months has been being able to work on my iPad and get a change of pace from my desk while I'm working from home. The time can really kind of blend together, and so it's been helpful for me to be able to take the iPad, work on the patio or the backyard or the kitchen table. Really just, again, try to break up the day a little bit. And for some cases, like the yard or the patio, Wi-Fi connection isn't always the best or it's not a given. Um, and so this feature, maybe some of you know what I'm talking about, is actually the ability to edit uh, and work on Office files while you're offline. This is something that's been particularly painful uh, for our customers. We've heard you loud and clear, so we're really excited to be demoing this. Um, and again, what I'm about to show you is being able to have this file ready for offline use, open it in the relevant Office app, make the edits, uh, and then when you're back online, have all those edits upload just like they would if you were online. So let's go ahead and see how this works. I've got this Contoso quadcopter camera report that I'm working on, and I actually need to make some progress on it, and I want to do that in a place where my internet connectivity may not be great. So I've downloaded this file for offline use, and I'm going to go ahead and go into airplane mode now. 
So airplane mode, no Wi-Fi. All right, so now I can actually uh, still preview it here. I see that I need to add a title and some other things. So I'll go ahead and tap that word app. I'll see that I, yep, I'm in airplane mode. And I actually do want to go ahead and add that title. So let's go ahead and start making some edits. Uh, rather than TBD, this is actually about the quadcopter. Um, and state of the art cameras. All right, I'll go ahead and leave that here. And I think there's also a few just quick typos I'll fix up while I'm editing. Top is changing, that should be digital. All right, so now I've got my edits. And when I actually get back online, so I'll go ahead and leave that. We'll see that Wi-Fi come back. And the Word app is actually gonna go ahead and upload all my changes for me. So if I jump back into the OneDrive app, I can actually see OneDrive catch those changes immediately, see that they've been uploaded, and apply them into my preview. So I've got that new title, I've got those typos fixed. And again, all that happened while I was offline in airplane mode, those two apps working together to upload those changes. So super excited to be demoing that, um, get it into the hands of customers like you to help you work from home and be able to get that change of pace um, when you need. And of course, when life is back to normal and you need to be on that airplane, make some progress on those office docs, that is now going to be supported. So we're really excited about that. Now, in addition to the OneDrive iOS experience, we also have a ton of users on Android. And so for this next set of demos, I want to highlight them on an Android device. Now, when we launch the OneDrive app on Android, I first want to spend a few moments highlighting that go to market plan shortcut. We saw it earlier in Randy's demos on the web, and now we see, we've see we seen it just recently on the iOS experience. But just like as you'd expect, that of course shows up on the Android app as well with that familiar iconography to help you easily identify that it is a shortcut. And just like my other folders, I can jump in and easily work with all that content here. The next thing I wanna show you is the OneDrive scan technology that's available right in the app. Now scan was already a useful feature when we were in the office and I wanted to quickly take a scan of that receipt or that document that I was working on uh, and it was great. But of course it's actually come even more in handy while we've been working from home these last few months and so let's take a quick look at what that looks like. So to start a scan I'll go ahead and tap this camera button and when I do we've got these meeting notes that I've been working on with a beautiful diagram um, right here. So go ahead and take that scan, looks good, hit done. Go ahead and save that as quadcopter notes. I'm gonna go ahead and save that right to my root. Now that's gonna go ahead and upload and when it does, we'll get a glimpse of my personal favorite OneDrive mobile feature. And that is the share with brainstorming for quadcopter solutions attendees. So what's happening here is we are partnering directly with Outlook to integrate with the Outlook calendar to see that you're in a meeting. And from that, we can deduce that this scan is actually taken either during that meeting or shortly after. And so in case that this scan is relevant to that meeting, in which case for me it is, I can easily tap that toast and bring up the OneDrive sharing experience here. So I immediately see that my attendees from the meeting are pre-filled on the two line. And there's a quick message here for me that says, here's the scan from this meeting. Um, this is all great. All I have to do is hit send. And now all of those attendees have those same notes that I just took down and scanned. This for our team has come in particularly handy uh, as we no longer can meet in person to brainstorm and work with the whiteboard. And so being able to meet virtually on Teams, have our same brainstorming sessions, kind of take note, draw a picture, sketch out ideas uh, on paper, and then you scan to upload and share them has really helped us bridge the gap and continue to work together collabor collaboratively, even if we can't see each other in person. Now, in addition to Outlook Calendar, we partner with Outlook on a bunch of scenarios. And so the next demo I wanna show you actually takes place in the Outlook Android app. So we'll go ahead and switch over to that. And when we land here, I wanna set up the narrative a little bit in that again, working from home can really feel more go, go, go than going to the office did, because that's what I've experienced. Uh, and so it's no surprise that I'm often maybe not at my desk when uh, my coworker, my boss says, hey, can you send me uh, a link to that report um, right now? And uh, again, I might be 
the kitchen trying to make lunch or if for those of us with kids just, there's a lot going on and so um, it's great to have my phone on me to be able to respond to those things quickly uh, to do that uh, if outlook if i'm in outlook i can go ahead and tap this compose mail button and if i want to grab that link i can tap the paper clip and i'll click choose from files immediately we've got that recent uh, list that we see in the OneDrive app as well, and we've seen that we've very recently been making all these uh, quad scans. Uh, but in this case, I actually want to drop that camera report that I worked on earlier. So go ahead and tap insert a link. And we're going to drop a formatted link right in the mail that follows my company's organization defaults. So I go ahead and I'll send this to Lee, who is asking for it. And I'll say this is the report draft. And just go ahead and hit send. So again, don't have to be at my desk, can respond to that stuff quickly, and can interact with my OneDrive files right from Outlook as well. To recap, we've seen a lot of great stuff. First, we saw the OneDrive home experience, where we highlighted recent files, shared libraries, and offline files to help you pick up where you left off fast. Then we saw shortcuts from the Add to OneDrive feature appear with familiar iconography right in your Files tab across both iOS and Android. We saw the long desired ability to download an Office file for offline use, then open and edit that file in the relevant Office app, all while offline. Then we showed our handy scan feature to easily digitize documents at home, combined with my personal favorite, Meeting Integration Toast, to easily share that scan right with your meeting attendees in just two taps. And finally, we showed you the file picker we've partnered with Outlook on to bring you a familiar recent list of files and easily share links to your files right from Outlook. Now, for this next section, we've heard from you that simple, intuitive mobile experiences are critical for end users to be productive on the go, but they need to be secure. As Randy mentioned, we have customers from the financial and medical industries who are trusting us with their most sensitive data. And with all of the devices coming online these last few months, it's top of mind for us to make sure admins have all the levers that they need to keep their data safe while keeping their end users productive and in control. So in this next set of demos, I'd like to show you some of the features that you can use to help keep that data safe. Now for this first demo in this section, I again want to take us to the OneDrive Android app. Uh, for my eagle-eyed viewers, you may have actually noticed this uh, file indicator on this Contoso purchasing data Excel spreadsheet that I've got here. And you may have wondered, what does that mean? For those of you who are maybe more familiar, this is actually a symbol that a data loss prevention policy is in place and has flagged this document as uh, conflicting with the policy. So if I'm an end user and I maybe not sure what that means, I've never seen it before and I want to learn more, I can do that right from within my workflow. To learn more and figure out what this symbol means, I can tap the dot 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 by this file and actually open the details pane. The details pane is located by tapping this eye icon right here. And when I jump into the details view, I see again that this symbol means that there's a policy tip and that this item conflicts with a policy in my organization. To learn more from that, I can tap this banner again and get this interactive view immediately scanning me and telling me why this policy tip is showing up. I can see that this item is protected by a policy in my organization. And if I scan down, I can see that it's actually because it contains sensitive information, a credit card number or a US bank account number. And it's been labeled with a PII retention policy. I see the last scan that happened and I have some actions at my disposal to be able to override the policy, though that decision might be later reviewed by my admin, or it could report an issue if I don't think this policy should be applied to this item. So again, right here from my app, from my workflow, I can see that symbol pop up and do my part to easily get educated on what that symbol means and respond accordingly to help protect my company's sensitive information. Now, for these next two demos, we'll switch over to the OneDrive iOS app. And in both of these demos, I'm going to highlight how you can use the Intune app protection policies to control the flow of your data. In this first demo, I want to show you how you can use a simple app protection policy to prevent data from being copied and pasted from this managed app, the OneDrive app, into an unmanaged app. So beforehand, I've actually gone into the Intune admin portal and created that policy. So let's see it in action now as an end user. I have these notes from a staff meeting, and if I go and I select some content, hit copy, and I try to take it to an unmanaged app like notes, when I try to bring that and paste it in, 
Instead of getting the content, I get this error message instead that my organization's data cannot be pasted in this app. But if I go to a managed app like Teams, for example, and I go ahead and enter in this message to send to Joanna, I see that my content does paste because again, Teams is a managed app within the policy, so that content's allowed versus an unmanaged app like Notes where it's not allowed. The next demo I want to show you actually highlights a newer Intune policy that we've been working closely with Intune on very recently to deliver. And that's the ability to control the data ingress into my business account. I've specifically not picked a personal account as a valid data ingress source. So when I try to bring content from my personal account into my business account, we're going to see that that's going to fail. Now, in this case, I actually might have some kind of dangerous content in my personal account that my company really does not need me adding to my business account. In this case, it's actually some ransomware files. And if I decide that I want to try to move those into my business account, I'll see that I can't. So let's go ahead and give that a try. I'll go ahead and pick the dot 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 here. And I'll go ahead and try to hit share and share that over to my business account. So I'll go over here, scroll down to send file. And when that loads, I'll actually pick the OneDrive share extension. Now in this flow, I actually see that I only have my personal account available. If I tap it, no business account shows up. That business account is being blocked specifically by that policy from showing up as a valid target. So I can't use this flow to bring that content into my business file, into my business account. I could try another flow, see if that will work, tap the dot, 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 hit share, maybe try to use the files app to get around this. So I'll tap save to files. And when that launches the file picker, I can see my Kudoso account here, try to save that document to my documents folder. And it said, this action is also blocked. Operation can't be completed. So again, I just can't bring those files from my personal account into my business account. Now, those could be dangerous files like this ransomware example, or they could just be personal content that really belongs in my personal OneDrive account and not my work account. To recap these demos, we first saw data loss prevention policies or DLP in action and how those policy tips will appear on files with sensitive data so end users can get educated on what's happening and stay compliant. We then saw how we could use an Intune app protection policy to restrict copy and paste between managed or unmanaged apps. And finally, we saw how a new Intune policy rolling out now allows admins to configure from which services users may upload data. In this case, blocking uploads from a personal OneDrive account. Our team is hard at work on making improvements to our experience. We're continuously working to exemplify best in class mobile first experiences that protect your data and keep end users in control. We'd love for you to join us on our journey. So if you're not already, download the OneDrive iOS or Android apps and see what we're up to. Thanks, back to you, Randy. Thanks, Lauren. Really exciting features coming to our mobile experiences. Next, let's, let's talk about how to drive engagement and adoption through migration, sync, and onboarding resources. It's up to you and IT to help ensure your users have the best user experience, utilize the features, and get the most value out of OneDrive. Let's start with migration. Our customers tell us that users are most active when they have files in the cloud to work with. As you look to move your files from local devices, network file shares, or third-party cloud providers, Microsoft has options to help you. These include self-service options for on-premise SharePoint network file shares, fast-track migration benefits for qualifying customers moving from on-premise network file shares, Dropbox, Box, and Google Drive, and lastly, recommended partners to handle most any file source complexity and velocity expectations you might have. Last year, we acquired Mover, who specializes in cloud-to-cloud -cloud migration. I'm proud to announce that Mover is available to all our customers around the world for free by going to mover.microsoft.com. Another great way to drive engagement and retention is through the desktop sync client. This is the client that comes out of the box with Windows and is available for, for the Mac, allowing you to access, edit, and share all your files through Explorer and Finder. We have a set of six best practices which make up the sync ideal state. This provides the best sync experience to your end users and to you managing them. I'll call, call out a few of the key steps, silent account configuration and known folder move. 
Silent account configuration allows you to log your users in without them having to physically type in their username and password. You can do this via a GPO or via Intune. The next one is KFM, known folder move. And this allows you to migrate and configure the documents, desktop, and pictures folders to OneDrive. Users can work the way they work and all those files become accessible on all their devices, collaborative and protected. We have some updated guidance on best practices at aka.ms forward slash sync ideal state. Hope you check them out. When it comes to driving adoption in your organization, we've established some resources and a framework for success. Start with stakeholders, identify who the executive sponsors are and the champions to help spread the word. Next, take a look at which scenarios are most relevant for your organization. Think about awareness. How are you going to communicate, share and educate how to use OneDrive in your company? And lastly, training. Train the trainers and set up help and support. This is a process and it may look different for every company and organization, but we've provided resources to help at adoption.microsoft.com forward slash OneDrive. And lastly, get creative. Adoption isn't a one-time thing, it's an ongoing engagement. And you have new employees joining all the time. The feature set gets richer every month with every rollout. Try new things like a Yammer group, celebrate success stories, lunch and learns, or competitions to see which teams can share or upload the most files. We've covered a lot of ground today. In summary, OneDrive is a key part of your one remote work strategy, powering file and collaboration experiences for Microsoft 365. We're bringing new functionality to make the combination of Teams plus OneDrive better. Don't forget the mobile apps. We have some great new features to help you be more productive no matter what device you're using. Your content is safe on mobile devices. We provide a number of policies through security and compliance like DLP and Intune to ensure your data is safe. Build a migration, sync and adoption strategy for best results. We'll close by saying a big thank you for listening today. We hope you found something useful in this presentation. We'll leave you with some links for some more OneDrive resources. Feel free to reach out with any questions. Good luck with your OneDrive journey. Bye.